Hello again, this is Ed from I Bring Back. Welcome back to our series of tutorials about R and statistical analysis in R and lately mostly plotting basics in R. So we're going to talk about setting the rules for your plots today, setting the rules for your null device, and you do that with phone you do that with one function in R, that function is called par. Let's take a look at it. Alrighty, can you smell what I smell? That's right, it's our base, our GUI, and we're back at home right off the top. We're going to employ this PAR function, and what PAR means is parameters, right? Short for parameters, and this is setting the graphical parameters for the null device. Now, the most common situation where most folks are going to run into needing to use this thing first is plotting multiple images in one device. So, one window for the null device, or one file if we're trying to save things. And so I want to show you how that works, and I'm going to look at just that basic case right off the bat, which is to say multiple things in one device. So we're going to set our parameters right away. MFRO equals C2, comma 1, which is to say, just like notation for data frames, we're going to list our rows first and our data second. Pardon me, rows first and our columns second. So we're going to set the parameters to say our graphical window, our null device, has two rows, one column. So we should see two plots, one over the top of the other. Let's find out if that's the case. Okay, I've run that. And what you'll see right away is it opened the graphical device for me. Now, there's nothing in there. I haven't plotted anything, but that device is open. If I were to type dev off, it would close it. You're familiar. Let's keep moving. We're going to make some more fake data. I've got a simple linear equation. We've got uh, something demonstrating absolute value. Our good old friends XYZ and ZZ will toss those in there. And then we will plot those two things. So if I run these plot commands and I open up that window, we should see, hey, look at that. Both plots are there. We have a nice line. We have an absolute value chart. Nothing too wacky at all. But for the first time, we can see we have both plots here split in the screen space. We have their axes labeled appropriately for each one. Nothing too wacky at all. So when you're setting graphical parameters, you're setting it for the current device. And that becomes important pretty quickly. Let's take a look here. So let's say we wanted to save what we just saw there. We wanted to have a PNG file that had those two plots on it. Well, we would just go ahead and run that, right? Let's see here. Open up a PNG, save it under duoplot.png in that folder we had from the previous video. And let's run this thing. So if we run these lines, all device one doesn't seem to throw any difficulty. Let's open up that folder and take a look. Hey, there's our duo plot PNG. But wait, it's only got the absolute value chart in it, which is the second thing we plotted. So what happened when we ran those commands is first it plotted that simple, you know, y equals mx plus b, this 2x plus 5 linear equation we had. Then it plotted the absolute value, and then it wrote to the file. And when it plotted the absolute value, it just went ahead and used the screen to show you exactly what you asked for and dumped the last stuff. So what you need to do is set parameters within that device. So I can borrow this material here, take it down within the PNG expression. Pardon me, that's a bad way to say that. Underneath the PNG expression. So we'll open up a device, we'll set the parameters for that device, we'll plot some things in that device, and then we'll turn that device off. So. Let's run those lines in that order. And when we go back over here and open up our dual plot file, look at that, exactly what we wanted. Both plots are in there, and we could send that off in an email or print it or do what we needed to do with it. So the use of that PAR function goes far beyond just splitting the screen up. Like I said, that's probably going to be the case where most of you run into it first. But it is massively, massively more expansive in its functionality than that. But uh, that's a, a basic look at it. You can read about what you can do with PAR once again by just issuing the help command for it. It's a pretty expansive piece of text. And as we sort of come to a close with the basic R plotting stuff, here, this will be one of the last videos in this vein for you, wanted you to understand that this is an excellent place to go to learn. If you read the help file on PAR one time through, you will be much, much closer to being an expert on plotting things in basic R than you would be from watching these last few videos. Not looking to put my own work down, but this is a nice complete document. It gives a good overview of some of the basics of setting stuff up in R. So if you're looking to spend some more time to get a little bit closer to being real good at these things, reading the help file on the PAR function R wouldn't be a bad use of your time. 
But in my estimation, neither is watching these videos. That's because I'm Ed, and this is my bring back, and I am striving to give you good information about R. Now we're done with plotting. We're going to move into some more ways to read data in in the next couple of videos. Appreciate you spending time with me. Urge you to come back, and we will continue. And please, thanks a lot.